Your dissertation is the largest piece of academic writing you'll do at university, so it pays to be well prepared. In this episode, you'll discover how to identify a topic, create your plan and what common mistakes to avoid. Hello and welcome to Future You, the podcast brought to you by Graduate Careers Experts Prospects. We're here to help with your career goals. My name is Henry Godfrey Evans and in this episode I speak to Ian Tapster, who is the course leader for journalism at the University of Portsmouth. Ian is here to set you on the right path with your topic and steer you well away from the mistakes he's seen over the years. So would you like to introduce yourself? Okay, my name is Ian Tapster. I'm a principal lecturer in journalism at the University of Portsmouth and I'm the course leader for the journalism courses at that university. And so just to clarify, what is a dissertation? A dissertation is quite simply a long piece of written academic work. Uh, the roots of the, the word dissertation actually come from the Latin uh, dissertari, which means uh, to di- debate or to discuss. And that's basically what a dissertation is. The student chooses their topic and they debate and they discuss that topic with the help of academic sources. For most courses in most higher um, higher education institutions, the dissertation will probably be the single biggest piece of academic work a student will do. And as a result, it will probably be the most heavily weighted. So it is very important to get it right. One thing to bear in mind is it's not the same as an essay. Some students tend to think, oh, dissertation, it's just a big essay. It is a bit different. Firstly, the, the sheer size of it. Uh, and secondly, the dissertation is, is the subject is actually chosen by the student. It's not um, an essay title that the lecturer has come up with. So the students can um, choose something that really is you know, of great interest to them. And with that pressure in mind, is there any common queries or worries students have and how do you usually ease them? I think one of the biggest obstacles... Uh, when students sort of set about their dissertation is it's not really knowing where to start or how to start you know imagine a blank screen and someone says right you've got to, you've got to write 10,000 words you sort of go ah oh, okay right fine um, where do I what shall I do first um, it's not surprising that students in many senses quite rightly take a holistic approach to the dissertation because it is you know it, it is one artifact if you like but it, it also helps to explain to students that if they can break it down into sections, then it's, it's, not so, uh, it's not so scary. So one way of reassuring them is to, well, firstly, to make sure that they see their supervisors and their supervisor can explain things, but also to show previous dissertations um, so they can see what the structure looks like, how to lay it out, how to go about it in general. So I, I think that's, that's, it's the fear of the unknown. I think that's one of the um, early obstacles facing students. Um, do you have any uh, sort of tips on how to approach literally the first few sentences or maybe even the first lot of the, just the initial plan? Uh, well, the first thing really is to is actually to go before the first few sentences and, and to make sure you've got a decent topic. Mm-hmm. Now, a dissertation by its nature is obviously going to take a long, a long time to do. Students will be living with it for months. And so it's, it needs to be something that is of real interest to them. At the same, by the same token, it also needs to be something that is actually researchable, and it's nothing too um, too bizarre that uh, no one's actually done any research on it before. So it's a combination of those things. And again, this is where the the student's dissertation supervisor can can help to guide, uh, because a, a student dissertation isn't going to get very far if there isn't any research on that topic area. So firstly, it needs to be of real interest. Secondly, it needs to be viable. It needs to be able to be done. Um, and I think also students need to be aware of whether they're going to be doing any primary research. So other people's research, they can look at that, obviously, sort of secondary research and so on. Um, if they're going to do their own primary research, they need to be realistic about that as well. You know, it's all very well saying, well, I'm going to do a dissertation on politics, for example, and I'm going to interview the prime minister. <laughs> well, well, they're not. Well, partly we, we haven't really got one at, at the time of recording, but <laughs> um, yeah, you, you need to, it's got to be realistic. Um, and also there are potential ethical implications if human subjects are involved. So that's something else to bear in mind as well. So there, these are all the sort of um, the foundations, if you like, before any writing is done. It's, it's, it's planning in the early stages. Yeah. Um, are there any resources externally that you actually recommend for the prep and planning stage? Uh, well, any good books on you know, how to write a dissertation, there's plenty of them out there and universities will have them in their own libraries, I'm sure. Um, 
looking, as I said earlier, looking at previous dissertations is a good way to go about things. I know asking, in, if you're in the second year, asking third years, what, what have you done? What do you wish you hadn't done? That sort of thing. Yeah. Um, so there's, and, and members of staff, you don't necessarily just need to talk to your own um, dissertation supervisor. You can talk to other members of staff who may be, you know, are, are focused in the area uh, that you're covering. So, you know, there's, there, there's always support around the university and, and it's welcome, you know, the, the staff, tutors and lecturers will welcome students asking them questions and, and, you know, maybe even pestering them because it shows that they're, they're really interested. Yeah. Okay. So assuming the vast majority of our audience aren't planning to cram it all, um, how would you recommend, especially in the early stages that people break up that time for the dissertation? Yeah, cramming is definitely not recommended. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, having said that, it does happen, and um, we know it happens because we read the results, and it's obvious it's happened. Of um, course. The, the the student needs to once they've sort of come up with their idea, once they've sort of floated the idea, and it's been given the, the go ahead as a, a you know a viable, feasible dissertation, then they really ought to start um, doing some sort of research straight away. You know, even if it's part of their second year and they're doing their dissertation in the third year. You can't start researching uh, too early. I personally would suggest, and dissertation supervisors, some will agree, some may disagree, I would personally suggest not to write too much until you've actually had more contact with your supervisor. Uh, there was several years ago, there was one instance, one of my dissertation students turned up at the first meeting in the third year with me and had written about 4,000 words. Oof. Such was the standard. He then had to go away and rewrite it because it had no input and he'd just sort of put stuff down over the summer holidays. All the research he'd done was fantastic and still came in useful. Um, so starting research early is good. I think if you are going to do primary research, you should do that as early as possible because, you know, you may know someone or you may have a friend of a friend, that sort of thing. They say, yeah, yeah, of course I'll talk to you. And then you can't get hold of them. And then maybe you need to um, find someone else or someone else or someone else and so on. So you can't start too early on that front either. Um, but again, you would need to make sure you've got ethical approval before doing that. One thing that students do need to bear in mind is that the dissertation isn't all they do in the third year, obviously. Yeah. They will have other assessments, which will be very important because, of course, the third year is the most important year in terms of degree classification. So... They will need to be prepared to put the dissertation on the back burner when they do other assessments. And in some ways, that's not a bad thing because sometimes, you know, you can get a bit, you can get a bit lost in a dissertation and it, it, it pays to sort of just stand, stand away from it for a, a couple of weeks and then go back to it with fresh eyes and think, well, actually, yeah, that's not bad or oh, why on earth did I write that? Um, so there's something to bear in mind. Uh, and it's always worth students in that when they get to their third year of, of looking up when their assessments are due, because the more they can do of their dissertation before other assessments start kicking in, the better. Uh, for, that, for that reason that they will have to put it on hold. So planning your time is actually very important. Um, students, in terms of their resources, will do what, what they want to do and, and what they've always done, you know, whether it's writing stuff on, on post-it notes and sticking them on walls or keeping a log or whatever. But some sort of planning in the background like that is also a good thing to do. Okay. Um, do you have any tips on how to reference? Um, yeah, <laughs> by the third year, you should be able to do it. Um, hopefully. It, hopefully. The referencing system obviously will depend on where you are and subject area and all that sort of thing. But it is really, really important to get it right. So my, my main tip is make sure you are completely comfortable with how to reference because you will, if you don't do it properly, you will lose marks. If you don't do it at all, you won't get any marks at all. Um, the, the important thing about referencing is that it's not just the, the quantity of sources and the quality of sources, it's also how those sources are used by the student. Uh, now there was one dissertation which uh, was memorable for all the wrong reasons several years ago, which I second marked, the student in the bibliography had, had um, included over 100 sources, which is fantastic. You know, you look at the bibliography, you think, wow, 100 sources, this is going to be good. The dissertation itself was absolutely awful because all it was was a sentence linking one source to another source to another source. To There was no coherent argument or anything like that. So they'd done a huge amount of work, but they put it together really badly. And owned, I think they just managed to scrape a pass. 
which was a complete waste of work. So in terms of referencing not only the accuracy, but it's, it's how students use all the sources they found, and also that they're critical with the sources as part of their referencing. That, you know, they don't just say, you know, Smith said this. Well, that's very nice for Smith. But what about other people on key points? Who else has got an opinion? Who else has got an argument? And being critical with the sources is absolutely key for getting a good mark in a dissertation. It's um, a very good segue, actually, because um, on the on the subject of being critical with sources, um, at a point where you might be critical with yourself, I mean, you have you have a plan or a hypothesis, you might start to sort of veer away from it as your findings sort of go against what you might have thought in the beginning. What is the procedure for when that starts to happen, if there is one? Um, I'm not sure there's a procedure. I would say that if that is happening, that's actually a good thing because it shows that your dissertation is evolving mm. and that your research is leading you down avenues that maybe you hadn't thought of before. And I think that's good. Um, within reason. I mean, obviously, students don't need to <laughs> change their dissertation topic halfway through the year. But to find new things, to find out stuff you weren't expecting, I think is, is well worth exploring. Um, and you never know. You know, it shows good research. And, yeah. it, you know, it's a student needs to be flexible. They need to be prepared to suddenly head off in a different direction within reason. Uh, and I think, you know, again, this is where the supervisor comes in. He or she will can say to the student, well, look, this is all very interesting. I don't think this avenue is actually that relevant. Stick with what you were doing. Or they may say, right, you found something really exciting here. Explore that. And you may need to sort of ditch some of the stuff you've done already. So the need to be flexible, the need to be self-critical and and. And also say goodbye to, you know, some bits that you may think are actually rather good. Mm. Um, you know, you, you, you might need to be uh, quite uh, quite harsh with yourself. What have students done in the past in dissertations that made them particularly memorable for you? Uh, well, I've mentioned one bad yeah. memorable one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. There, is, there, there was actually another bad memorable one, um, which, you know, if she had done the opposite, it would have been an excellent dissertation. Um, one of the other differences about a dissertation compared to an essay is the, the potential use of appendices. And uh, I had a student who was planning on putting in not just one appendix or two, but loads and loads of appendices. And it, when I got the final piece of work, the appendices were longer than the whole dissertation, which isn't a problem in itself. It's just there was absolutely no mention of, of the appendices in the dissertation. So right. instead of saying C appendix A or B or one or two, there was absolutely nothing. So all that work that student had done was was gone to waste. So that that was memorably bad as well. Um, in terms of slightly more positive, uh, the ones that's the, the highest mark I've ever given to a dissertation was actually when I second marked. And I, I think it was about 85%, which for a dissertation is, is a very high mark. And it was quite simply the super a superb use of academic sources. It was all the all the stuff I was sort of saying just now, where the student had done some good research, lots of research, and all the sources were good, strong sources. It wasn't Wikipedia or my mate down the pub who's told me something. These were really good, strong academic books, journals, etc. And she had put them all together and come up with a really, really compelling argument. So that that's an ex that was an excellent example of a very, very good use of sources. Um, and some of the primary research that um, I've seen over the years has been very good indeed. I had a student a few years ago who was doing a dissertation on Islamophobia in the press. And she went out and interviewed a number of imams from London mosques. And mm. when she showed me that document, the information in that was absolutely mind-blowing because, you know, th these, this was all, you know, from the people most affected by Islamophobia or alleged Islamophobia, if you like, in the press, you know, getting their opinions. She had done a fantastic job and it was really eye-opening to see what uh, what people had to say. And it wasn't particularly complimentary about the press, as you might imagine. Hmm. So that was that was some excellent, excellent primary research there. Um, so th those two spring to mind immediately, one based on secondary sources um, and one based on primary sources. Okay, so... Moving towards the completion of the dissertation, how would you approach the editing stage? Are there certain things you should be looking for or certain things people forget to check? Uh, it's, when you've got 10,000 words or so, you're going to forget something. <laughs> it's yeah. very easy. Um, proofreading is the obvious answer. Make sure you proofread it carefully. Make sure you cut out any spelling errors, grammatical errors. Um, don't do what one student did, which was write the same paragraph twice. I'm not entirely <laughs> sure how that got through. Um, having said that, 
Proofreading is very difficult. Proofreading our own work is very difficult because it, no matter how good your intentions, by the time you've gone down a few lines, you sort of know what's coming and the concentration already starts to flag. Yeah. Um, so, but you need to look for, basically, you need to look for mistakes. You need to look for um, typos, things like that. But also the argument, is the argument logical? Are your aims and objectives, which you should have, hopefully, somewhere in the introduction, have they been met? Have they been addressed? Um, the first chapter after the introduction is normally, and again, this will depend on you know different tutors, different courses, but normally would be a literature review. Has the dissertation gone in chapters two and three? Has it gone back to the literature review to include it again? Rather than just say, right, I've done the lit review, that's it, let's forget about it. So has it sort of referenced back to it and, and so on? Um, students need to check there's no repetition. That's a common fault in dissertations that they say something and, uh, and the students enjoyed making that point so much they actually made it again and then again. Um, so making sure it's nothing too repetitive. Um, and what they forget is, again, I, I suppose really what they forget is what they don't check. <laughs> it's as right. simple as that. Uh, one other thing to look out for is that it's not too subjective. And, and again, this goes back to referencing. So, you know, if a student's making a point, does it actually need a reference if it hasn't got one? So that's an important thing because as soon as the dissertation starts becoming subjective, it, it becomes a little bit less academic. Although having said that, there are different schools of thought. So some tutors will tell their, they'll tell their students, don't use the first person singular, don't use I. And other tutors will say, yeah, that's fine. That's fine these days. You can do that. Um, so the student does need to go with what their dis uh, dissertation supervisor recommends them. But it's just going through, making sure everything fits, making sure the argument is logical, that there are no inaccuracies, that it's not subjective, that there's referencing where there needs to be, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Um, as a final question, um, slightly more generic than the earlier one, um, what are the top three things you look for in a great dissertation? First one... I think is the use of sources because it's this big, chunky academic piece of work. You can't get a good mark if you don't use your sources well. So that, you know, I, I can't stress that enough. Second one is clarity. If a dissertation is clear to read, now bearing in mind that the marker will probably have a, a good number of dissertations to mark uh, and maybe second mark as well. They don't want to keep rereading paragraphs to try and work out what they mean. So clarity, in terms of the points you're making, in terms of the aims and objectives, a nice, clear, easy writing style, not trying too hard to be overly academic or anything like that, but good clarity. Um, it's, I always think of good clarity as subconscious marks. If I'm reading a dissertation and I get to the end before I expect it, I think, oh, that was a good dissertation. Hmm. Unless it was very short, obviously. Um, so critical use of sources, clarity, and also that it's interesting. Yeah. Because... That's easier said than done because, you know, these are big, chunky academic pieces of work and there's, it's very easy that they end up quite dry. And it's a tough thing to do given the subject matter. You know, obviously some subjects are more interesting than others and, and more, you know, um, likely to be interesting than, than others. But if you can somehow stamp your personal touch on it without the use of the first person and make it interesting and make it compelling then again, the, the, the reader is going to think, oh, this is really, this, I, like, I like this dissertation. It's really, really good. It's interesting. The students found out some fascinating points. You know, for example, like the, um, the primary research in, in the London mosques. Um, so anything that's interesting and not too dry, uh, which is easier said than done. But with dissertations, uh, and again, this will depend on subject, it might depend on the institution. Students should be submitting drafts along the way, you know, chap drafts of chapters and so on. Um, and this is where the supervisor again comes in and can say, well, yeah, it's okay, but it's a bit dull. You know, yeah. it's okay, but it, it's a bit too sort of narrative rather than analytical, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so I think critical use of sources, clarity and making it interesting for the reader. Thank you for coming in. You've been a great guest. Right. Thank you. My pleasure. Big thanks to Ian for speaking to us today. And if you'd like to explore more student content and advice, then check out the University Life section at prospects.ac.uk, where we have articles such as seven tips to writing a dissertation. Until next time.